my dear friends and welcome back to another very exciting Star Wars news update. Today we're going to be talking about a brand new development for the Mandalorian and Grogu, we've also got our first reviews for Star Wars Outlaws, and we have John Boyega reacting to the Acolytes cancellation. Tons to talk about, let's dive straight in. We have some great news for the upcoming Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Filming has been going on for a couple of months, and in a brand new interview with Deadline.com, Sigourney Weaver confirms that the rumours of her involvement in the movie are true. And secondly, filming is going really well. She even mentions that she got to meet Grogu on set just the other day. This doesn't necessarily mean her unknown characters can have any scenes with our little green baby, but she got to interact with the puppets. She said this, I am playing a role in The Mandalorian and Grogu. I got to meet Grogu for the first time the other day. I'm filming that before I go to London for The Tempest next year. So she's very busy. Having Ripley in Star Wars is pretty fantastic. And she also confirmed her involvement in Avatar 3, Fire and Ash, which was announced at Disney's D23 Expo. She already finished filming her scenes last month. The third installment of the Avatar franchise releases in December of 2025, just five months before The Mandalorian and Grogu. So it's going to be a big year for the actress. Here's a fun bit of speculation. If she was on set with Grogu, and in scenes with him, could she be the new Magistrate of Navarro, following the passing of Carl Weathers? I speculated when the rumour first came out that she was going to be in Star Wars, that she might be playing a live-action, canon version of the character from the EU, Admiral Dala, a founder and warlord of the Remnant. But knowing Disney Star Wars, I think they want to go their own direction. Aside from a couple of characters, obviously the biggest one being Thrawn, they don't seem to want to borrow too many literal direct characters. So if anything, if she's going to be a remnant, it's going to be someone who is adjacent to an Admiral Dala type of figure. But for all we know, she might be on the other side of the coin and be an important part of the New Republic government. Alternatively, she's a smuggler or bounty hunter who comes across Mando and Grogu in their adventures. She might be someone who tries to kidnap Grogu. She might be employed by the remnant or might be someone who knows how valuable Grogu is. Might be a person who knows how much of an asset he is and knows she might get a sweet payday just for bringing him in. She's an extremely versatile actress, so I can envision her in a plethora of different roles. The good news is that with The Mandalorian and Grogu coming in 2026, we should start to get our first proper marketing campaign, our first teasers and trailers sometime next year. Filming is taking place both in the United States and some scenes in the United Kingdom, and there has been some fan math that since the actress Katie O'Brien was recently here in England, she might have been filming scenes for the Jon Favreau movie. Just speculation, nothing definitive, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Mandalorian and Grogu continues a Liar Kane storyline from season 3. If you recall, my dear friends, she was a Moff Gideon loyalist who infiltrated the New Republic's amnesty program, a kind of rehabilitation for former Imperials. And as we saw in the episode The Convert, she used her position to spy and frame Dr. Pershing. But the infiltration from Coruscant is likely to continue, as Favreau and Filoni continue sowing the seeds of the downfall of the New Republic government. But the most disturbing thing about the episode The Convert, which I'm hoping The Mandalorian and Grogu continues to show us, is the unsettling ending that reveals a greater truth of the fear and disorder at the heart of the New Republic. Despite providing an amnesty program, there is no proper judicial system that allowed Pershing to have proper representation no one to advocate for him, not even a lawyer. If you were a former Imperial, there was no trust. The amnesty program was pretty shallow, and it must have been terrifying to be framed like he was. It's almost dystopian and mortifying. In other Star Wars news, my dear friends, John Boyega, Finn from the sequel trilogy, responds to Amanda Stenberg's post on the Acolytes being cancelled after just one season. Here's what she wrote. It takes a village to build a character, let alone twins. Now that all of our show is out, I have to thank the beautiful people who became my family on this show. And then John Boyega replies with an acknowledgement, almost a nod of solidarity, the Han Solo salute. Some outlets have interpreted this to mean it's a gesture of welcome to the club, but I think he's just giving a friendly gesture. Although it is true, Finn was sidelined. John has his own experience with Star Wars cancellation of a very different sort. If you think about the way Finn was treated in the sequel trilogy, some would argue that's a cancellation in and of itself. Now I should just say, Amanda Stenberg hasn't reacted to the news of the cancellation outright. This was a post 
just thanking those who worked on the show after it finished airing, but John Boyega responded to it after the cancellation news just a few days ago. As I've been doing, my dear friends, I will continue to cover any developments that come out of this. But finally, the first reviews for Star Wars Outlaws are in, and the response has been pretty mixed. When the game does work, without performance issues which have been widespread, it's pretty fun and does have positives, but like I say, tons of negatives too. By all accounts, Star Wars Outlaws feels, quote, alive, like you're existing in a real lived-in Star Wars world, especially in terms of population density and various planets. That being said, the combat is pretty mid. It's fine not being a Jedi, in fact many players welcome not being Cal Kestis or another Force user. It's pretty cool to be a scoundrel for once. But the shooting is sometimes pretty mediocre, with fans who've already completed the game saying it's unfortunate K uses a pistol and nothing but a pistol, granted with a few different mods, from start to finish. Any other weapon you pick up is temporary and is going to be lost with anything you do leaving a zone, performing an action, getting on your bike, anything, and you drop any weapon you've acquired, and you're left with just your pistol. So shooting for 90% of the game isn't the most thrilling combat. Then there is the dated character modeling. This is something that's been spoken about ad nauseum. The character modeling for NPCs is pretty much unevolved, and while it doesn't need to have the Last of Us level of detail, it's still pretty jarring for first time players. It comes out on Friday, but for those who pre-ordered the game, and for those who have Ubisoft Plus, they've had early access. The performance issues are a major factor as to why some of the reviews are pretty low, but Rolling Stone say this is one of the best Star Wars games ever created, and I have heard the reputation feature of the game is one of the most addictive elements of it. Just to catch up to speed, if you're not aware, you have to build a reputation with the various syndicates, the Pikes, Crimson Dawn, and you know with Kira appearing in the game, Crimson Dawn is the one syndicate I think most fans want to have a good reputation with. I saw one review talking about how the scoundrel life is done better than some of the live action content. Centering on the story of Kay Vess, a two-bit thief from the casino city of Kanto Bight, who's just trying to make ends meet. Paired with her four-legged sidekick Nyx, Kay is a cable grifter looking to line her pockets, although she dreams of something more. When an ill-advised gig leads her to steal a ship from the Zarek Besh Syndicate, she and Nyx find themselves fleeing the planet, in desperation. As these things tend to, their situation cascades, and they come across some pretty familiar faces, and they run afoul of syndicates, bounty hunters, and even the Empire itself. I've seen snippets of reviews, I've seen some gameplay footage posted on YouTube and X, and I've got to say, when the game is good, like I say when it doesn't have the performance issues and glitches, it does look quite fun. Another feature I've seen is that you can recreate the binary sunset scene at the last homestead, and someone kind of lined up the scene from A New Hope, with the Outlaws footage, looking at the twin sunsets. Let's just hope the skeletons of Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen aren't just lying around, and they have been properly buried. I was trying to get a balanced view of this game, so I scoured various reliable sites, and I tried to find those that weren't overly biased one way or another, because those saying it's the best game they've ever played don't seem to highlight the issues numerous players I've come across have mentioned. And in this review, in Stuff.TV, they say one of the biggest perks is you can finish the story in 15 to 20 hours. A criticism of Ubisoft is that with their open world stuff, it's very bloated, too much fluff, but it seems like they've cut it down to just the substance. Also, the world exploring seems pretty fun, but there are a lot of limitations in the environments. An example that comes up a lot is trying to infiltrate an Imperial base. It became apparent you tend to slip off any remotely slopey surface surrounding it, and there are just a couple of prescribed paths you can use to walk, so this can make navigating seem a bit limited and narrow. And another pretty fascinating tidbit, the Rebel Alliance isn't, quote, as rosy and idealistic as it's usually depicted. As a scoundrel, coming across syndicates, the Empire, from a third-party perspective, you seem to notice the flaws of the Rebellion more so than you do in the films. Very interesting stuff, but what are your thoughts on all of today's news? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, check me out on socials, and may the Force be with you, always.